1 Peter chapter 3. And on the, the same theme, really, that Peter had been speaking of and encouraging his, his readers in the fact that um, as Christ suffered, they too will suffer. But in that suffering, continue to remain to, uh, to not be rebellious against those authorities that they're suffering with. Um, then he talks about the workplace or slaves or masters. Uh, to be subject, to be uh, submissive, and then he speaks to the wives and husbands. But then he comes in in this uh, final thought, if you will, of chapter 3, of encouraging us to have this uh, unity of heart, a unity of mind, uh, to be uh, submissive one to another really is kind of the overarching theme, not to think of ourselves more highly than others. And he comes to verse 13, he says, um, now, who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? It's kind of a rhetorical question. Um, if you're harmed for being zealous for what is good, um, then that's really an honorable thing. But, but if you're harmed, the contrast to that, if you're harmed for doing that which is evil, it's kind of like, you know, that's, that's kind of what you get. But, but there's a prize. There's an honor in being harmed or suffering for doing what is good. Now, if you remember the context of 1 Peter, he's writing to that early church that they were facing severe persecution. And he, he kind of carries the thought that what Jesus had said, that, you know, if, if the Son of Man suffered and died, and, and you, you can kind of expect that, that if, if I have suffered and died for righteousness, then you being one of my followers, you're going you're gonna to face suffering and persecution, and some even face death as a result of that. And so Peter's reminding them that uh, suffering for what is righteous and what is right, uh, that's an honorable thing. Verse 14, but even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. And I, I just kind of imagine believers in this state of suffering, Peter is encouraging them that, uh, yes, suffering will come as a result of following Christ in, in that day, and it still happens all around the world today. Uh, we don't face it here in, in the West, but uh, potentially it's coming and it could come. Uh, and so Peter's encouraging them in the midst of that suffering for doing right, that there is a blessing in that, that God honors that faithfulness and God blesses that. Then verse 15, he says, but in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy. And we've spoken about this a lot, that that it it's, it's in our hearts where that righteousness begins. It's in our hearts, he says, that we honor Christ as holy. And the gospel has always been about a matter of heart. The actions will follow where there's a right heart, but it can be masqueraded. And you and I both have met individuals or seen individuals fall, and you think, man, I never would have thought they would have done that. And odds are that the heart had not been transformed yet. And so it, it's always a matter of the heart. Where our heart is right with God and in fellowship with Him, that 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 will work its way out in right living. It doesn't mean that we're going to be sinless. It doesn't mean that we're going to be perfect. And so if you're trying to strive for perfection, please give that up. Um, you'll never attain that. But Christ living in us and his life working its way out of us, if you will, by the power of the Holy Spirit is what brings that right action. He says, then he says, always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect. Uh, you can imagine the situation where someone may, uh, may ask, why do you have the hope that you have? Now notice the emphasis isn't here on why do you act the way that you act, but it's why do you have the hope that you have in the midst of persecution how can you have such hope, really, to put it in context of these readers of Peter's letter? Uh, 
And then he says, always be prepared to give a defense or to give an apology, if you will, or argument. Now, we think of that in, in terms of, of arguing and debating, uh, and but that's not really the idea behind that word. The idea behind that word is to be able to to share why you have such hope. And then he says, but do it with gentleness and respect. Now, we all need to underline our Bibles in there. I, I have observed through the years that that maybe with right intentions, Christians have done so much harm um, in, in giving a defense for the hope that they have. Um, oftentimes in a very judgmental, in a, in a very critical way. And when they do that, I, I, I kind of question, did they ever realize the magnitude of sinfulness, the condition of sin they were in before Christ saved them? You see, those kinds of defenses that are offensive, offensive, that are done in, in an attitude of a haughty spirit, um, that tells me there's indication that that person never realized how utterly sinful they were. You see, I think when, when we recognize how totally sinful we are apart from the graces and mercy of Christ, we will have greater compassion for those who are steeped in sin. Sometimes our self-righteousness comes out and we think, well, I never did that or I never would have done that. Given the opportunity, we would. And it may be that we just didn't have the opportunity to act out in those sinful ways. But the honest truth is we we have that condition in our hearts we're, we're utterly sinful apart from christ and so paul reminds us in a couple of his letters uh he reminds those believers remember you too once were you too once were wretched and acting just like the gentiles act oh we may not have done it in action but it was in our hearts and so there's a humility that that naturally comes when we recognize how utterly sinful we were. Some of us have fallen to those sins or lived in those sins in the past. Um, the only reason that we're walking with God today is because of his sheer grace in our lives. And so when you have the opportunity to give a reason for the hope that is in you, Please don't be snippy, don't be arrogant, don't be boastful, don't be proud with it. Remember you too once were and give a gentle and a kind answer. I'm reminded that it's, uh, it's the kindness of God, the Bible says, that leads us to repentance. And so he encourages us to do that. Verse 16, having a good conscience so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. Our fleshly response to slander can be to come back in the same spirit, uh, to be reviled and to come back with reviling, as he says earlier in this chapter. But here he encourages us once again that when we are slandered, um, that others that are slandering us may be put to shame by our response of love and in in loving them in the nature and character of Christ. They'll be put to shame. Uh, let that be the defense of a love, an unconditional love exhibited to those who slander us and allow the Holy Spirit of God to work. And it will cause them to question and say, man, how can that person respond to me that way in love when I have just slammed them let the Holy Spirit work in that through our actions of love towards those who might revile us or criticize us or slander us. Then he says in verse 17, not, let me back up. That's not easy. I know that. But the Holy Spirit can empower us to do that if we yield to him, yield to the Spirit, and not to the flesh. For it is better to suffer for doing good if that should be God's will than for doing evil. It's better to suffer for doing good than to suffer for doing evil. Meditate on those things. Take some time. Read back through these verses. Ask the Holy Spirit.
The Holy Spirit opened my eyes and my heart changed my heart. Well, you need to change my heart. Uh, may God enable us and empower us to reflect the love and the power of Christ in our lives. Let's pray today that God gives us an opportunity to plant a seed of the gospel in somebody's heart where we recognize that there has already been a seed that's been planted and God's drawing them, that we help cultivate that seed of the gospel. Um, and if God, by his grace, would let us participate in watching somebody be saved today, oh God, would you do that? I love you. I pray the Lord's blessings on you. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning where we'll close out this chapter, chapter 3 in First Peter. I love you. I pray the Lord blesses you and keeps you. Have a great day.